below here, hamming it up on Tube App Theater. Welcome to the Radio Shack of D Lab Electronics. Today on the bench, I have a Heathkit DX20 transmitter. This transmitter has output, but the metering circuit appears to be defective. Let me show you what it does. So here is this beautiful DX20 transmitter under test, okay? The complaint is, is the transmitter is operating, however the metering appears to be in-op, okay? So I have a key connected. We're in transmit mode. I'm going to hit the key. You see that plate meter? It just pegs. Okay, and it pegs whether you're trying to get a dip out of your amplifier or trying to reduce it with your loading. It just pegs which I agree, it makes you suspect. It could be the metering circuit, maybe the shunts. So let's go take a look at it out in the shop. So first off, I always give the radios a good visual inspection. And look at this baby. I mean, this transmitter looks as new as you could possibly get. It is gorgeous. Let's look at the bottom side. Here's the bottom of the radio. New filter caps, resistors, terminal boards. This thing looks like somebody did a super job on rebuilding it. So here is the back of the plate meter. Now if you look over here, this is a 12 ohm shunt resistor. And then they use a little ground here that goes to a lug. And I found that this lug was a little bit loose. I tightened that up, but of course made no difference. So let's buzz out this shunt. And then the other shunt is underneath, and it's a 500 ohm, but that's for the grid. All right, so measuring the 12 ohm shunt, there it is. I'm going to flip the switch. You can see interaction with the meter movement. So I'm assuming that that's good to go. Here's the grid side, it's supposed to be 500 ohms. There it is, flipping the meter. You can see the interaction, so that's okay too. So to verify the plate metering, what I did is I have a jumper wire here going to the key input. And according to the schematic, when I ground this, you should see the 12 ohms in line with the tube to measure the plate current. There it is. So all that appears to be fine. So it appears as though the metering circuit is fine. So the only option is it's really pulling that kind of plate current. I noticed it had a lot of output. I also noticed that loading control does nothing. So Heath kits are famous for bad soccer connections, right? Let's take this thing under the old magnifying glass and a light and see if we can spot any. Inspection of the solder connections didn't really show me anything that would cause trouble. So I came down here and I thought, well, let me take a good look at the loading cap itself. So you can see when I turn it, it's nice and smooth. I don't hear the plates dragging, okay? So everything looks fine. So I thought, well, let's take a look at the output connections here that go up to the tuning network top side and make sure that's okay. All right, so that loading capacitor that I showed you underneath comes up through this porcelain standoff, which is a feed through, okay? So this couples that loading cap to your tuning network. So I'm looking at this, I'll put a light on it, hopefully you can see, and there's a wire coming over here from the band switch. Watch this wire. See it? not soldered. There's our culprit. So let's grab the big old monster welling slobbering iron. Get in there and reflow that connection. And give her a test. Well after repairing that connection I also found out that off of the main tuning cap this lead here is also not soldered. You can see it moving around in there. So, I better go through this thing and repair everything I can find that looks defective before I put her under test. So let's go into plate mode, transmit, key it up. You can see my plate current now is down where it should be, and I can dip it. Plus, I can adjust my loading and get more output, and you can see the power. We're good to go. So let's take a look at what happens when you put in a defective or weak crystal in your DX20. I'm on 15 meters. I have a 
7 megahertz crystal installed. We're in transmit mode, okay? And we hit the key. And you can see there's no oscillator current, all right? But here's the worst part. Let's take a look at the tube. See if I can get in where you can see it. I'm keying the tube. Now watch. See that red glow? That tube is going into warp drive, people. Now let's put in a good crystal. Now I've installed a known good crystal. I'm going to hit the key. We're in transmit mode. Okay, here we go. You can see all kinds of current. And I can adjust it right to the two mils required for the transmitter. And here's the tube running happy as can be with a good crystal. Unfortunately, you'd never know that that tube is overheating because the only way you can see it is with cover off. So if you do not get oscillator current, don't keep running that crystal because you're going to damage the tubes. All right, so here's the final checkout of the DX20 transmitter after repair. Into a dummy load through a Drake W4 meter, little key there. We're going to listen on an NC303. So here's the 40 meter band. There's my grid. Here's my plate. Lots of power out. 20 meter band. Grid. Plenty to spare. Plate. Here's a 15 meter band, same thing. Grid, tons of grid. Plate, now I'm in tune mode. If you watch the watt meter, you can see you can tune it, peak it with your loading. Go and operate. Lots of drive. All right, lastly, 10 meters. You can go to grid, tune. You can see I've got a little more grid drive now. But you need that up there. Go to operate. Dip it. There's a power. So we're going to take a mission complete on the DX20. It's reassembled. It's working well. This was a finicky little transmitter. It was entry level. Okay? So don't expect this thing to work like a ICOM or something. All right? But majority of the repairs were simply bad solder connections, especially in the output section where those heavy gauge wires are soldered to terminals. Those are troublemakers. The other thing I had to do is replace the oscillator tube simply because it overheated due to lack of crystal excitation. The only other thing I can suggest is on 80 meters, you may have to add some coupling capacitance because the load cap is very limited on the capacitance. There's some articles about that on the web. Take a look. Hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, 73's, friend 6 tlu What the heck is this? Somebody poking fun at me? See you again on Tube App. Dita!